Oh. This is going to be a fun train wreck. I'm not recording the podcast quite yet. I just want everybody to start piling in. Because, um... This is experimental, right? So, as... As, like, a... YouTuber, like, you want to experiment with different things. But, like, nothing too crazy. So, this is the first time that... I am going to be recording my Tennis Underground podcast along with a live chat audience. I I don't think anyone in the tennis industry or in the tennis realm has done this before. If I'm wrong, feel free to let me know in the chat. But um, I, I, I want to hear your... I will bounce off you guys when I start recording. I will let you know when I'm recording. Um, but I, I'm really curious to see, like, how this turns out. And everything, everything's an experiment. Everything really is an experiment. So I'm hoping this is going to be a fun one, and most of all, a successful one. Yes, we just reached 1,000 Discord members, which is fantastic. Um, I will talk about American Tennis now. Thank you, Moza Designs. Thank you very much, dude. That's, uh, that was a... That was a Arguably, like, I wasn't lying saying that that was, like, the biggest match of my life so far. And I, I'm happy to say that I personally think that's my biggest win of, of all time. That, unfortunately, at the expense of Dill. But I think I will be playing Dill um, in his home courts uh, in Virginia sometime uh, later this summer or uh, early fall. So, um, do you guys have any questions since you're, you guys are kind of here early? Karen, Jake, Francesco, Austin Conlon, Moza Designs. Uh, I mean, this is a little cutting edge here. I, I have to set up my MacBook Pro to record on a second mic for the WAV file, and then this uh, primary microphone for uh, the, the broadcast um, for live. So, uh, uh, see. So, <laughs> All right, Zach, chill out, dude. Okay, so remember, guys, um, feel free to type as much as you want. Um, I'll, I'll address it if it's topic appropriate, no problem. Um, and I do have a podcast. It's on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. Uh, it, it's literally called Tennis Underground. Uh, so feel free to... Oh, shit, sure, I'll type it. Happy 4th of July to Americans out there. somewhat chug this beer I'm going to talk about it hopefully I'm not a crying mess joking alright I will answer your guys' questions assuming it's like within realm of it Welcome to episode six of the Tennis Underground podcast. And this one's a special one because not only is it the first one where I don't have my co-host and one of my good friends, Brian, and he's been featured on the very first five episodes, but this is the first one. It's actually broadcasted to a live uh, YouTube audience. Not obviously live as in like, oh, people are you know laughing, people are interacting. I'm not going to have you know, 17 people in my condo because it's a relatively small condo, but it's broadcasted in front of a YouTube chat audience. So I really want to talk about something, and I think it's a lot easier to talk about it now, um, now that the first week of Wimbledon is done, and there's only eight people left. So 
it's been a pretty interesting Wimbledon because one of my favorites, uh, at least for grass in Wimbledon, and he made it to um, the finals and lost to Djokovic, I think in 2021, Matteo Bertini, um, along with Marin Cilic, I think Marin Cilic, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Marin Cilic was uh, a finalist who lost to Federer because I remember him crying out of not just physical pain, but emotional pain. Uh, Marin Cilic um, and Bertini both had to withdraw from this year's 2022 Wimbledon because they got infected with the worldwide pandemic, which is obviously very unfortunate. I'm sure they'll recover their professional athletes. So it's, I had them going in to the draw pretty, pretty deep. I think I had them going to at least the round of 16, if not semis. Um, but the late news came up that they had to pull out. Probably not the very first time they ever pulled out, but it is what it is. Um, so we, we've had some upsets and I'm going to only talk about the men's side. I'm not really an expert. I, I really don't follow women's professional tennis too much. Um, one of my, uh, moderators, uh, and longtime subscribers, Karen is asking who wins Wim women's Wimbledon at this point. No clear favorite. Maybe Simona Halep. She's looking pretty good. She destroyed Paula Bedosa today, like two and one. And she, she was looking really clean, even though, uh, based on what I know, Simona Halep's uh, weakest surface is actually grass. She's definitely more of a clay quarter or in hard quarter. Uh, let's see how many match, how many Grand Slams Simona Halep has won. Um, Simona Halep has won two Grand Slam singles titles. I believe one was the French Open, if not both. Um, oh, she did win Wimbledon in 2020. Sorry, 2019. I apologize. It's actually really surprising that she never won a French or a U.S. Open before, given um, she's uh, a little bit shorter stature. I believe she's five foot two. Really, really good footwork. Amazingly high work ethic. So... I'm surprised she actually has won Wimbledon. I, I would assume it's at least a French Open and uh, another hard court like the U.S. Open, Australian Open. But I digress. Um, if you guys haven't realized, um, I am a software developer. And it's weird because I like use Google Chrome for like everything as like a default. But one of my followers or one of my subscribers has suggested that when it comes to uh, tournament bracket play like a grants uh, any tennis tournament that's not round robin um bing is actually like super super good they have a very very clean layout very very weird for me to say that but bing has a very clean layout of like the draws and it's simple and it's really really easy to see so if you guys haven't checked out uh bing.com and again not sponsored i'm just saying it's a, it's a really cool thing that they have going something that google chrome doesn't have surprisingly but the layout for the <laughs> Bing search engine for something like Wimbledon, it's it's actually everything I could ask for. It's like so simple, so clean, but it's it makes it a lot easier for me to like organize my thoughts and see scores as the tournament uh, progresses. So um, yeah, I mean, Simona Halep moves very well, even though. Um, Someone's making a comment about she used to have the mommiest of milkers. What, what do you mean by that? Just, just curious. <laughs> I'm joking. She did have, uh, I think it was called, I don't know what the proper term is. I think uh, breast reduction surgery. Um, and she won two grand slams. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Austin Conlon uh, on my chat is saying that maybe it's because Bill Gates is a tennis fan, uh, which he is. Possibly. Possibly. I'm wondering how much uh, Bill Gates has influence on something like Bing nowadays. Anyway, I digress. So, the last eight in the men's singles is Novak Djokovic versus Yannick Sinner. David Goffin versus Cam Nori. And I'll talk about these individuals and kind of like their path to the quarterfinals after I name it. And then in the bottom half, is uh, Christian Garin, I believe. Is that Argentina or Chile? I forgot. 
Uh, Christian Garnin is um, 43rd in the world. Yeah, he's climbing up there. Um, and yeah, he's from Chile. Uh, typically, uh, South Americans such as Christian Garin are, are, are clay quarters. Um, most notably, like someone like uh, Marcelo Rios, if you guys are on the older older side of uh, men's professional tennis. Uh, so Christian Garin is facing the bad boy of tennis, Nick Kyrgios, and his story to where he's at right now for this Wimbledon is like a podcast episode of its own. It's absolutely fantastic. I love it. And if you guys haven't noticed, based on the tone of um, <laughs> of how I said that, I'm a huge uh, Curios fan. You could even call me like a Curios simp or a Curios fanboy. If you guys um, haven't haven't um, noticed that already, but the keen eye definitely has noticed it. Um, and then uh, the last match for the quarterfinals um, is Taylor Fritz, um, who's the 11th seed against. The Rafael Nadal Pereira, um, who's a two seed. So it, it's such a. It's like throwing spaghetti in the wall of like predicting like almost every single match and match outcome before the main draw of a Grand Slam tournament actually starts. So that's why I kind of waited until the second half of this tournament to be able to kind of like actually like predict not only the outcome of who wins the tournament not only the outcome of these these matches but also like kind of like give like a shout out again as an amateur tennis player um i'm rated a 5-0 now um and you know as a part-time tennis coach that's super passionate about the game and i'm not a full-time tennis coach at all because I'd, I'd go insane but it's a lot easier to like kind of predict. Um, obviously, you know, numbers are with me because I'm dealing with eight individuals instead of 128 in the men's singles draw. But it's it's a lot more fun because it's a lot more. Uh, I wouldn't say predictable, but there's like there, there's more analytics uh, per match and per outcome of a match. Like for some reason, like some people might think it's exciting. But I actually don't like watching women's professional tennis because anybody can be beat anybody. And that, that's fine. That's fine for some people, right? It's exciting. Like, to be honest, even I like upsets to, to an extent. But when it comes to, like, hey, upsets are, like, more common than not upsets based on ATP rankings and possible history, then, like, doing predictions like this is a little bit, a little bit crazy. This is That's why I... I eventually want to do um, women's singles, uh, Grand Slam, or major tournament stuff and predictions, but I'm not there yet. I'm concentrating on the men's side right now, specifically second week. But, anywho, let's talk about the very first match. Novak Djokovic and Yannick Sinner, okay? So Novak Djokovic, as controversial as he is, um, his path was beating... Um, S. Kwan, uh, Kwan Soon Woo. Kwan Soon Woo in four sets in the first round, then beating the Tanasi Kokonakis, aka the Kok, uh, in the second round. And in the third round, Novak Djokovic beat the most endowed and hung and well packaged tennis player of all time, next to Marat Safin. Um, Van Rietenhoven, Tim, I thought it was Tyler, Tim Van Rietenhoven in four sets. And then meeting Yannick Sinner in the round of 16, aka the quarterfinals, right? So, oh, sorry, round of 16? No. The quarterfinals, uh, last round of eight, sorry. UI was a little bit messy on that one. And Yannick Sinner went from beating oh this is a long one where did sinner come from yannick sinner the 10th seed beat um a three-time grand slam champion in the form of stanislav babrinka in four sets uh beat uh i think his i believe his name is michael Ymer, michael murr in the second round round of 64 
And then in round of 32, Sinner, and this is where I got it completely wrong. I thought John Isner, who has the most aces of all time in ATP. Oh, I skipped Djokovic beating Kazmanovic. Yeah, Djokovic just dismantled uh, Kazmanovic, a fellow Serbian countryman, uh, Mirmer. Apologies for that, Zach. Apologies for that. Um, Sinner beat John Isner. I thought Isner would beat Sinner in four sets. And then Sinner beat, um, in one of the greatest matches in Wimbledon this year, Yannick Sinner in the round of 16 beat, I would say he has to be a multiple Grand Slam champion, um, in the near future. Carlos Alcaraz in four sets. Uh, Carlos Alcaraz winning the third set, 10-8. And he had to work for that. Which is kind of interesting. So, in my opinion, that very first round, <laughs> um, a as much as I like Yannick Sinner, as much as emotionally I want Yannick Sinner to beat Djokovic, I think Djokovic is going to win in three or four sets. Djokovic is just... Uh, I, I would argue um, Djokovic's uh, second best surface is uh, is is grass. Um, I, I think he is. I believe he is the greatest hardcore tennis player of all time because he has the most male singles grand slams on hard court. Um, I, I believe. Uh, I believe next to Federer, he has the most Wimbledon titles. That's currently active obviously pete sampras is uh right behind federer in terms of grand slam singles title so i i personally think novak djokovic is going to beat yannick sinner in either straight sets or four sets now let's take a look at the quarterfinals right below jo djokovic and sinner david david goffan um, from Belgium, he's kind of an interesting story because Goffin was, I believe he was like the top 10 or top 15 before he got super, super injured um, in a, almost like a freak accident in the French Open, um, where I believe it was uh, somewhere, I think it was uh, deep in the first half of the tournament or early in the second half of the tennis tournament where Goffin like I think he legitimately broke his ankle off of a slide going towards the tarp, which is highly, uh, you know, obviously very, very unfortunate, but I'm glad he, he eventually recovered. But taking two or three years off of being like who you used to be, you know, a, a perennial top 15 player in your early 20s, that's going to take an emotional and physical toll on you. So I, I'm glad to see, I'm glad to see the Belgian David Goffin bouncing back. But... Let's see what he's been like in this tournament. So, Goffin beat, uh, he's a redder, Radu Albat from Moldova um, in straight sets, 6-2, uh, 6-2, six, two, six, two, um, seven, six, seven, five in the tiebreaker. And then in the second round, Goffin beat um, Sebastian Baez, who I did watch in Indian Wells um, in 2022. In, in Was it March? Yeah, er, er, early March. Indian Wells is fantastic. I highly suggest, highly suggest that you guys check out Indian Wells for the tournament if you guys uh, haven't done so already definitely a bucket list if you're a tennis fan. And then David Goffin came back from a set down to beat Ugo Umbert, who's been on fire. Is Ugo Umbert a lefty, guys? I, I totally forgot. Ugo Umbert, um, who was born in 1998, therefore eight years younger than me. I feel horrible now that I saw that. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. Um, Dave, David Goffin did beat Ugo Umbert in four sets. Um, he lost the first set 6-4-6. Six, uh, six. And then won the next three sets to get to the round of 16. And then David Goffin just broke my absolute heart as an American tennis fan because he beat Francis the Big Foe, Tiafo in five very close sets. Very close sets. Umber, 
I said Umber. Zach is saying that I'm pronouncing it wrong. Ugo Umber. Umber. Umber? Oh, Umber. Umber. I apologize. So for those of you that are not well versed in uh, French last names, it's not Ugo Umber, it's Ugo Umber. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Fantastic. Yeah, uh, David Goffin beat Francis Tiafo. And I'm a little bit triggered on that because I had Tiafo going to the quarters or semis in my bracket. But good for Goffin because Tiafo was actually like super, super good on grass. I believe he did beat Stefano Tsitsipas in the first round of Wimbledon last year. And I'm also a huge fan of Francis Tiafo, not only for his game style or demeanor on court, but of how he kind of like grew up. Like he did not grow up rich like Djokovic, Nadal, or Federer. He grew up um, kind of, let's say, scraping for money um, in, in, in Maryland um, as a kid with his family. So I, I'm very a very big fan of Francis Tiafo, the big foe, um, who has the best behind next to Dominic team in both the men's and women's side. So shout out to Francis Tiafo, big foe. I want an autograph. That'd be great. <laughs> has anybody ever met Francis Tiafo or Tifo? Um, with the big foe in person. He, he does seem like a really cool guy. He does he does seem like a really cool guy. Um, but David Goffin did upset me in my heart and a lot of American tennis fans out there beating the big foe in five grueling sets. 7-6, In the round is Christine. And now... David Goffin is going to face Cam Norrie from Britain. Um, I believe uh, Cam Norrie, he did win. Didn't Cam Norrie win Indian Wells asterisk 2021? I, I believe he, I believe he did. Cam Norrie is um, a Masters 1000 champion, I believe. Um, which is fantastic because he played American college tennis at, I believe, uh, TCU, Texas Christian University, which is a pretty small university, obviously, in Texas, in the USA. But it's um, it's it's very small, but also extremely good at tennis. I think they're always, like, top 10 in both uh, men's and women's uh, on, a, on a regular basis uh, for their respective college teams. Um, Nori carrying the hope of UK. Yeah, I agree, Karen. Nori is carrying the hope of UK. Um I'm wondering what happened to Kyle Edmund, the very, very big hitting, um, huge forehand, very big hitting Brit. Um, he was the number one ranked uh, British player in the world for about a year, year and a half. I don't know what happened to Kyle Edmund, injuries or something. Hopefully, I, I do want to see more of Kyle Edmund. Super, super strong forehand, big serve, uh, backhand just kind of like, ugh, it, it is what it is. But it's, um, I, I, I did like Kyle Edmund. I really like his game style. Okay, so Cam Norrie's little Cam Norrie's story. Uh, Cam Norrie beat Pablo Andujar, and Pablo Andujar uh, broke the hearts of Roger Federer fans back in, I believe it was 2021. Uh, Federer tried to get into the clay court season, um, and Federer played, was it Madrid or some uh, non non-Grand Slam clay court tournament. Uh, Pablo Andujar beat Federer, I believe it was straight sets. And then Cam Nori in the second round beat Jaime Munar um, in five sets. Cam Nori, the ninth seed, beat Jaime Munar 6-4, 3-6, 5-7, 6-0. You don't see a lot of bagels, especially in Wimbledon. Uh, and then 6-2. And then Cam Nori, uh, again, Another Brit just destroying the hopes of American tennis. Cam Nori beat Stevie the Mustache Johnson 6-4, 6-1, If anybody watched that match, did Steve Johnson just look tired? Man. Yeah. I, 
Pablo Andujar. Um, okay, so Pablo Andujar apparently beat Federer in Geneva, which is, a, I think, a 250 or 500 ATP clay court tournament, and then beat Team in Rolling Garros. But Team, obviously, was not 100% because Team has been injured left and right. Um, Jaime. Apparently, Jaime is wrong. Jaime Munar. At least he got the last name right. Cam Nori beat Jaime Munar in, this, in round of 64 in the second round. And then Cam Nori beat Stevie Johnson. Am I saying Stevie Johnson correctly? Just wondering. I don't know if I'm American anymore. Which is weird because Cam Nori, even though he grew up in the UK, because he's from the UK, um, hasn't had much success on grass court tournaments until like now. I thought he was more of a hard court guy. And then, oh, again. Ugh. Is Cam Nori literally the king of Britain at this point? Because Cam Nori, in the round of 16, the fourth round of Wimbledon, beat another American. This time, the 30th seeded Tommy Paul, 6'4, 7'5, 6'4. And Tommy Paul, he's he's a fighter. He he's a journeyman, or at least was a journeyman, because he's he's seated in Wimbledon now, which is fantastic. Ugh. Tommy Paul. I'm pretty sure it's Tommy Paul. Um, Cam Nori, the 9 seed, beat Tommy Paul, the 30 seed, in straight sets. Close sets, but straight sets. So my prediction for the second quarterfinal is David Goffin does beat Cam Nori. I believe Goffin will beat Cam Nori in five sets. Unless an injury happens. I believe Goffin will beat Cam Nori, even though Goffin is unseated. So apparently, according to Skillen, Cam Nori was born in South Africa, moved to New Zealand at three, moved back to UK at 16, moved to US University, then went pro. Oh, he's a he's a journeyman. He's he's a, he's well traveled, let's say. Yeah, Tommy Paul is very entertaining to watch. I really do appreciate um and I mean, Tommy Paul has a big forehand, but he's not really known for, like, having a big serve on, like, Francis Tiafo, Taylor Fritz. I, I do like Tommy Paul. He's definitely, he's kind of like a John Millman of sorts, but strikes the ball a little bit better, in my opinion. Okay, so Christian Garin. Let's get back to him. Christian Garin, who looks like he's always about to fall asleep, no matter what. Christian Garin, no offense to him, looks like he's gonna fall asleep at the wheel after five Jägermeisters, even though he's on the tennis court. He, he looks like a very, very sleepy dude. <laughs> um, I'm sure he's gonna absolutely kick my ass now that I said that. Um, but he, he looks like he's either constantly high or he took way too many Ambien the night before along with some Jägermeister. But, that's just me. So, Christine got in, got an easy, easy, easy first round win against Matteo Berrettini because Berrettini got infected with uh, the Rona, right? Christine Garin uh, beat uh, Elias Ymer, which is Michael Ymer's um, brother. I don't know if he's older or younger. Um, Christine Garin beat uh, Elias Ymer in straight sets, 6-3, 7-5, And then Christine Garin in the third round, round of 64, beat... Is that, is that a French flag? Ugo. Hugo Grenier. Am I pronouncing that right? Hugo Grenier. 636161. That is not a contest. That is a rollover. I think I could have taken a set off Hugo Grenier with that with that score line. Um Ooh. Christian Garin beat Jensen Goatsby, aka Brooksby, the 29th seed in four sets. 1664. In Brooksby's defense, um, I don't think Brooksby... I, I think Brooksby's worst surface by a long shot actually is grass. Because um, Brooksby is known for his foot speed. He's not for his power. He's known for his kind of shot placement. <laughs> like, I can honestly say that I have a bigger... Not a better. A bigger serve. A, me, a 5-0, I have a bigger serve than Jensen Brooksby. But he would absolutely destroy me. Um, and then in the round of 16... The fifth round of the tournament, um, Christian Garin somehow edged out Alex Di Minar 
the speed demon that looks like he's 14 years old and weighs 140 pounds, Christine Garin beat Alex de Minor 2557766476. Um, something tells me that Alex de Minor kind of choked because he was up two sets to love and let it slip away in two, two set tie breaks in the final three sets. And Christine Garin has to face the bad boy of tennis, Nick Kyrgios, in the very next round. Speaking of Kyrgios, let's talk about his path to the quarterfinals. Oh, apparently, Christine Garin, sleepy boy, saved two match points against Demon. Demon R, good for him. Diminar cannot grow facial hair. Um, I believe Diminar can grow facial hair. Um, it just takes like two years and a lot of row gain. And believe it or not, um, fertilizer. If you guys have trouble growing facial hair, go to your local Home Depot um, or, or whatever uh, whatever plant store. Um, just buy like a small pack of fertilizer and then just place it on your face overnight. Um, if you do that about once a week, you will eventually grow uh, facial hair. Um, it's a little bit uncomfortable, unconventional, but you actually, you actually will. Okay. Ooh, Nick Kyrgios, he hasn't had an easy draw either. So Nick Kyrgios had to face the hometown favorite, or sorry, a hometown hero. Um, Paul Jubb. Paul Jubb, it was previously ranked... Oh my God, he's born in 1999. I'm literally almost a decade older than him. Um, Paul Jubb was ranked 227 before the start of this tournament. Um, so Kyrgios beat out, beat out a local a local hero, Paul Jubb, 3-6-6-1-7-5-6-7-7-5. Apparently that was kind of a circus show, but not as much as a circus show as uh, the other matches that Kyrgios won. So Kyrgios not off to a good start winning the very first round against someone outside of the top 200 in five sets. Kyrgios then face, is it Franco Krajanovic? Filip Krajanovic, close enough. Also kind of a baby face. Um, Kyrgios in the second round, round 64, uh, beat Filip Krajanovic. Croatian? Am I saying that right? Cro Croatian. Yeah, if you guys get fertilizer in your mouth, um, don't worry. That, that's perfectly normal. You, you might get a patchy throat every now and then, but it, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Um, he was, uh, Filip Krianovich was born in... Oh, Filip Krianovich was born in Yugoslavia, but he represents Serbia in terms of uh, ATP professional tennis. So Kyrgios dismantled Filip Krianovich, the 26th seed in the second round, round of 64, 6-2, 6-3, 6-1. And then Kyrgios, ooh, this is a good one. Kyrgios facing Stefanos, the Greek god Tsitsipas, who's the four seed. I forgot how high Tsitsipas was ranked, seeded in this uh, in this tournament. Kyrgios beat Stefanos Tsitsipas six seven six four. 6-3, 7-6. And apparently, this match was an absolute circus. I I wasn't... It, it happened on Saturday. I was teaching all day Saturday on the tennis court. But apparently, based on the Discord, and if you guys um, are a Discord type of person, um, we just recently hit 1,000 regular members on my Discord. There is a link in the description if you guys want to check it out already and talk about this conversation and talk about professional cult tennis culture, professional um, tennis results, tennis rackets, tennis strings, join the Discord. It's free. And it's also good for you. And I'm also telling you to as well. Kyrgios beat Tsitsipas in four sets after dropping the first. The four seed Tsitsipas. Then Kyrgios, another upset, in my opinion, because... I didn't have Brandon Nakashima going very far. But Kyrgios beat Brandon Nakashima, a young American. I believe Nakashima is... Oh, he's 6'2". He's a big boy. <laughs> Nakashima's like 19 years old. Or 20 or 21. Oh, he's 6'1". 
Oh, if you guys are interested in uh, me playing um, Brandon Nakashima's uh, former tennis coach, um, let me know. I have a friend that used to coach Nakashima, and he's back in the Milwaukee area. Uh, so Kyrgios uh, beat Nakashima um, in five sets, 6-4, uh, or sorry, 4-6, 6-4, 7-6, 3-6, 6-2. So, Kyrgios versus Garin. Kyrgios versus Christian Garin. <laughs> Kyrgios is going to win in straight sets. Kyrgios is going to go all out. There's no stopping Kyrgios in the quarterfinals. Okay. Let's talk about the last match. of the quarterfinals. Taylor Fritz versus Nadal. I'm going to skip over um, basically the past of Fritz and Nadal in terms of this tennis tournament because Fritz hasn't dropped a set. Nadal has only dropped one set against, or sorry, two sets. Once against uh, Francisco Serendolo in the first round and then dropped a second set against Ricardis Barenkis uh, from Lithuania who's ranked 106 currently in the second round. So Nadal beats Sonego and uh, Van de Zandschlup. So, this is a tough one. I think Taylor Fritz is going to win in four sets. And I'll tell you why after. I'll tell you why after this bathroom break. Okay. Whoops, wrong one. Okay. Here's why. Yeah, I, I literally had to use the bathroom. Deal with it. Okay, let's talk about why Fritz is going to beat Nadal. In four sets or less. I, I think it's going to be four sets. I'm hoping for straight sets. I, I really think. I really think. Here's why. Fritz destroyed Nadal in the Indian Wells final in straight sets, right? I mean, was was it even close? Miami, BNP, Pariba. Okay. Okay, it was close in the second set, but Fritz handled Nadal in straight sets at the Indian Wells final. A Masters 1000, like the fifth or sixth Grand Slam of the world. Right? Fritz's best surface is not actually hardcore, in my opinion. I personally believe it's grass. Big serve. He moves okay. He's actually pretty agile for being six foot five. And Nadal, as one of my moderators have pointed out, Nadal is probably injured with a rib injury. Oh, had a rib injury. Sorry. Well, Nadal still has half a foot. I, I think Nadal's not at 100%. Um, I, but injuries are part of the game. I still stand by my prediction that Fritz is going to win in three or four sets against Rafael Nadal. Okay? Nadal's worst surface by far 
by far, Nadal's worst surface by far is grass. By far, his worst surface is grass. And I think Fritz's best surface, by a good margin, is grass, based on his game. Yeah, getting old does suck. But that's part of life. It's part of mortality. It's how you deal with it. So I think we are truly at the cusp of the young players finally, finally taking over the big three or big four. Yeah, I think Fritz is going to win. He's been playing fantastic. And his game, again, his game style, absolutely, almost perfect. Not as perfect as John Israel, but absolutely perfect for hardcore tennis. Or sorry, for grass court tennis. Is that a hot take that Fritz is going to beat Rafael Nadal in the quarterfinals this year? Okay. If you think it's going to go to five sets, who do you think is going to win? I'm actually curious because I don't think it's going to go to five sets. But let's talk about my semifinals, let's say. Djokovic versus Goffin. Ooh, here we go. Okay, some people are thinking it's going to be Nadal in four. And some people are even saying Nadal will absolutely destroy Taylor Fritz. All right, we'll, 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 see, in, we'll see in 72 hours whether or my predictions as a tennis coach. Amateur tennis player is right. Why was Becker not at the Parade of Champions? Uh, because uh, Boris Becker um, is in a very long line to go parade in the shower and drop the soap. Because he did some naughty things. Okay. A lot of people are disagreeing that Nadal in five. That's fine. That's what we're here for. So. Let's talk about the semifinals. I believe Djokovic will absolutely absolutely destroy David Goffin in three sets. It's going to be like 2-1-2 and two, or 2-1-3. and three. Quote, quote me on that. Djokovic isn't even going to be close to dropping a set against Goffin. The reason is, I think Goffin is going to be tired against Cam Norrie in the five-setter in the quarterfinals, as I have previously stated. But Djokovic has way more firepower than Goffin when it comes to not only grass, but all surface. As someone has said, Djokovic is a better version of Gafan. People don't understand. Djokovic is kind of like... Uh, I, I believe he is more of like a hardcore specialist. But Djokovic is kind of like a push. But he can go for winners if he really wants to. I think Djokovic is a wall. In all surfaces. Specifically hardcore and then grass. And then, and, and then clay. Clay is his worst surface in my opinion. As a singles player. But I think Djokovic is going to destroy Gafan like 2-1-2 and two, or 2-1-3. and three. It's gonna be this. It's gonna be a massacre. It's gonna be a massacre. Now, question is, Kyrgios in the second semifinal. Kyrgios versus Taylor Fritz. Ooh, Kyrgios versus Taylor Fritz. What are we gonna do? I'm saying. Oh, I think I think the chat is going to hate me no matter what. And my Discord is going to hate me. I'm going to divide the Discord on this one. I think Nick Kyrgios is going to beat Taylor Fritz in four sets in the semifinals. I think Nick, the bad boy Kyrgios, who I would say... I don't have metrics behind this, but I personally think Nick Kyrgios is the most talented tennis player of all time. More so than Federer, more so than Safin, more so than Shea Suwe. I think Nick Kyrgios is the greatest talent tennis has seen. And I don't think the Fritz versus Nick is going to be a coin toss. I think Nick Kyrgios will drop the second set and win the first, third, and fourth. Ming Dady, I, I, he can, but I don't think he will. I think Nick has his shots are too big. 
I, I think Nick Kyrgios moves just as well as Taylor Fritz on grass and singles, if not even a little bit better, and has a lot more firepower, has a much bigger serve, has a way bigger forehand, has better volleys at the net. Um, I, I will say, though, that uh, Taylor Fritz has a better backhand than Nick Kyrgios on grass, and, and actually in all surfaces. So that's why. So, it comes down to this. Nick Kyrgios, in my prediction, of Wimbledon 2022. Nick Kyrgios versus Novak Djokovic in the Wimbledon 2022 final. And you bet your ass I'll be live streaming this on my Discord or even on YouTube, and I will take the day off. It, it, if, it, if Nick Kyrgios, I don't care about Djokovic. I really don't. You, you, know, you guys know what I think about Djokovic. If Kyrgios is in the final of Wimbledon, I'm taking at least half a day off, and I'm going to be partying with you guys just because uh, this is like a meme like being willed itself into life. It's fantastic. Oh my god. I did not... I, 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 I gotta watch the Tsitsipas um, Kyrgios uh, full match, not just the highlights. And I also need to watch the post-match uh, interview and the press conference. But if you're gonna... If you're gonna ask me right now, after a beer and three shots in... Ooh, I don't know if I should even say this out loud. I don't know if I should say this out loud. Might be a hot take. <laughs> I honestly think if it's a if it's a Djokovic versus Kyrgios singles men's final for Wimbledon 2022. I think Kyrgios will win in four or five sets. If it's a Djokovic versus a Kyrgios tennis match, I will put $100 down on Kyrgios winning that, that match. And I want to see Nick Kyrgios win a singles Grand Slam and lift that trophy over his head. Not just because that's what tennis, in my opinion, that's not what tennis needs. It is. Tennis does need that. Um, just because of the memes. <laughs> just because of the memes. Like, the tennis world will be, like, on fire in a good way. You got to see the world burn every now and then. You got you to gotta burn it and rebuild it every now and then. But I want, and I... I could see it. I could see Nick Kyrgios winning the entire thing. When was the last time Nick Kyrgios got to the second week of a Grand Slam in singles? <laughs> oh my god. Will Kyrgios mock the living hell out of Djokovic celebration after winning? If he wins... Wimbledon 2022 against Djokovic in the final on the biggest stage in sports. Well, first of all, I don't think Wimbledon is the biggest stage in sports. Technically, it's the U.S. Open because it holds the most seats. So you, you got to have metrics in that um, in that adjective of yours. But is it arguably the most prestigious? Yeah, probably. Is it the is it the longest running Grand Slam? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think it's the biggest stage. I think the U.S. Open is the biggest stage. Nick will moon everybody. I hope so. All right, guys. Let me know what you think about the predictions. Um, if you guys didn't have already, do me a favor. Um, follow me on Tennis Underground, which is on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and all the major podcast services out there. Um, Spotify is obviously the biggest one. Um, I will be publishing this very, very soon. Um, if you haven't already, do me a favor. Um, hit like and hit subscribe to my tennis channel, Mark Sansett, S-A-N-S-A-I-T, and join my Discord for more daily shenanigans and retailer discounts. So, 
Well, keep in mind, Nick might, you think Nick might be gassed since he doesn't get to the second week of Grand Slams, but in the second week of Grand Slams, assuming you're just doing one event, like men's singles, you have two to three days in between each match to recuperate and rest. So, as always, guys, happy hitting.